The Parallax for Writers theme supports blogging. In this video, I will go over the settings that must first be in place before you can start blogging. Chances are that I would have taken care of those for you during my installation, but if you're watching this years later and back when I set up your site, you were not planning on blogging, you may have to take care of some of those steps yourself. So I'll do everything step by step. And once the blog is ready, then I will show you how you control the featured image, how to go about creating an excerpt that you control, the length and where the paragraphs are, how to include an image, and how to use tags and categories and display them in certain areas as well. When you go to the back end of your site, you will have to first create a page. This page will be blank, but it needs to exist. So this page, if I was to edit it, there's absolutely no content there, but it is associated with the blog. So just create a new page, call it news, blog, whatever you want to use. As long as it's not used by some other page, you'll be fine. So create that page and publish it. Next, you will want to go to your settings under reading. This is where you need to select that page and designate it as your official blog archive page. So find that page that you just created and select it. And while you're in here, you may as well decide how many blog posts do you want to showcase on your blog archive page. So for me on this page here, there's one, two, three blog posts. You control that number. Don't make it too long. People will not scroll all the way down. So pick whatever you want. If you have more blog posts, then there would be a button that would appear that would say older blog posts and people can navigate their way through that if they want to see more. So change whatever number. Here I highly recommend you put summary and then 10 is a good number. This is for your RSS feed, something separate but in a way related. And this for you should be unchecked. This is just a local host on my computer. I don't want the search engines coming to snoop on my computer. So, But normally for you, this should be unchecked. Save your changes. While you're playing with your settings, I highly recommend you take a moment to consider whether or not you want to allow comments on your blog posts. If you write nonfiction, this may be a better option. If you write fiction, really think about the time suck this could quickly turn into. But it's up to you at the end of the day. It's your time, how many hours you want to spend per week reviewing comments. I'm telling you right now that most of the comments will be spam bots. There will be some real readers if you have real traffic but uh, do expect the majority of spam at the beginning. If you want to enable comments or not, you should go through the discussion settings. If you want to minimize the number of notifications and things that you need to approve and mark as spam or whatever, you can remove those settings here. This is the one that really enables people to comment by default, but you can override for individual articles. I'll show you how to do that. So if you do not want to enable commenting anywhere, you can remove that. This by default would turn on commenting on new articles. Now you may want to limit who comments. If you want to say comments must be manually approved, you will receive a lot of emails asking you to manually approve those comments. But at the very beginning, it may be a great way to prevent spam from automatically appearing on your site. It is up to you. You also have a bunch of options in here. Feel free to go through that. Once you're happy with whatever your settings are, then you can save your changes. Now let's say that you wanted to only enable comments on one new blog post and the rest of them you don't want to allow comments. I will show you how to do that. Access the list for all of your blog posts if you already have some. It's a matter of bulk editing. Edit, apply. So for all of my comments right now I could just say do not allow, update, and then I could quick edit for one particular one where I say, okay, this one here, I'm allowing comments. So you can do this and at any time you can play with your screen options, change the number of blog posts that you can select all at once by doing this quick edit. So if you know there's only two blog posts where readers are allowed to comment, best to remove comments from all of them and then reapply comments to the two that you care about. So now you've got the structure in place, but you haven't included it in your navigation. Your menu is controlled by going through appearance menus. There's a separate video that talks about that, but if you have multiple menus, make sure to find the one that says primary menu. Then you can search for the page, whatever name you've given it. So for me, it was that. You add it to the menu, give it a second. It appears at the bottom. You can drag it and drop it into place. I'll remove my duplicate page. If you wanted to give it a different name here, this is just 
renaming what the word says in the menu. You can change it here. If I wanted to call this news, I could do that. So now when I look at my site, my blog will now say news. So up to you what you want to call it. I will revert back to calling it blog. And now I'm back to normal. So these are the basic settings. Once you've got this in place, you can start blogging and your blog posts will appear. The most recent will always be at the top. If you wanted to manually reorder the posts that appear here, for some reason one is more important and you wanted to put it at the top, you can fudge the order if you want by going to posts and then manually quick editing the date to change the order. So if you change the date to be today's date for an older blog post, it will automatically bring it up to the top of the list. So this is how you could quick edit, change the date here, update, and then go to the next one, change the date. You can do that. I don't recommend that, but if for some reason you did not mean to publish it on whatever date, you can always do that. And that reorders the blog posts when you look at your blog page here. You may be wondering, my blog post doesn't have this pretty image here. How do I do that? And what dimensions should I use? I will show you that. First, I need to click the title or the image to be taken to the individual blog post. Now I can edit this blog post. That featured image needs to go here. I highly recommend you use 1200 pixels wide by 630 pixels high, which is the same ratio that Facebook likes you to use normally. So if you use a plugin such as Yoast SEO, you will notice here under the social tab, they ask you to upload an image for Facebook and this is the dimensions they recommend. So this is why I recommend the same, plus the horizontal or landscape image looks best. So by putting that featured image there, this is what made it appear above the title. And no, you cannot move it below the title. It will always be above the title. If you don't want that image there, that's fine. Just don't put a featured image. You can put as many images as you want down here. And I will show you how to do that. But I also want to show you how to control the excerpt. So on the blog archive page, you may have noticed that this is not the full blog post. You can control this and there's two ways to control it. I will show you both. One that is not ideal, where by default it will retrieve so many words and then add the words read more. So let me show you that when you go in the back end, appearance customize, theme options, excerpt options, and this is where you control the number of words. So if I wanted to just say 20 words and then say read more, hit publish. When I view the site, I now have 20 words. It doesn't matter if the paragraph of the sentence was finished, it's putting read more like this. If you have fewer than 20 words, then it will not put the read more link. So these blog posts are complete, so that's why the read more link doesn't appear. But this is not ideal, this is not very enticing. So I recommend you use the other approach, which I will show you now. By the way, if your previous theme used this one here, I recommend against it. The one I'm about to show you is more powerful. So you can disregard that. You can leave it there. It's not going to do anything. But you need to click screen options here. Look at excerpt. Make sure it's selected. That will automatically make another box down here. So you can either copy and paste from here if you wanted to include exactly two paragraphs. I did control C with my mouse, I'm going down here and I'm doing control V to paste. So you can do that and I'm gonna say, so you see where I'm ending this, I'm gonna update this. When I refresh my blog archive page, you can see that this is what I did and then the read more fits nicely here. This is even more powerful where you could even include an image so let's say you did not want to put a featured image or you could leave it there, but you wanted to put another image down here. You can do that in the individual blog post as well as in the excerpt. At any time, this is a default WordPress feature. You can put your cursor anywhere. Click add media and find an image. Down here, you decide where you want that image to go. This is the part that most people skip. You can either use left center or right center. I would only use if you've got a very big wide image that you want to 
use its own line for. Otherwise, left and right are the best options. And here, I would either leave it none, or if you want to link to Amazon or to your book page, put in the full URL and use this option. And here you control the size. So thumbnail is bad because it cuts it square, and most times it's not good. But you can pick whatever you, you've got into here. I'll show you where to get more options in a second. So floated left looks like this. The image is left and the text wraps around it on the right. If you click here, you see the same options. You can align right, so it's floated right, and then the text floats to the left. You could do center, but once again, I would only do this if your image is landscape and takes a lot of room. That would be a good option. And this one never do, because that's what it looks like with some words around it, but it looks awful, so never touch that one. But what I want to show you, if you click the little pencil, you have a few more options. You still have the alignment, but in here you now have a custom size. So if you thought that this was just a little too big, you can reduce it a little bit, put it a little bit smaller here. Just worry by changing one of the numbers, the other one will automatically shrink or increase based on what you've done. You could also link it to something here, and you can make the link open in a new tab if you wanted to send people to Amazon. Now you can update. Now when I update this, and refresh, I have this image here. So this is within the blog post, but you can do the exact same thing and float an image in your excerpt down here. So you can stretch this interface if you want it to be larger. And let's say I wanted to put an image to the right. I'm going to do this here. I'm going to float it to the right. And that's probably going to be too big, so I can once again click on the little pencil in here with the new interface, I'll make this to be 80, 89, that's fine. Update. Now, I'm not going to see my excerpt when I view the post itself, but if I look at the blog archive page, now I will see my little image here. So see how the excerpt can be totally different. The only time you will see the excerpt is when you're looking at the blog archive page or if you're looking at search results. If I try to find this particular blog post, the excerpt is retrieved. So this works for all of your pages as well. So feel free to include an excerpt. The excerpts would only appear in search results if we're talking about regular pages. Blog posts, the excerpts also appear on the blog archive page. Now, some people ask me about tags and categories. Most people end up using them the exact same way, which creates duplicate content on, I'd say, 90% of the blogs I see out there. So that's why I only display one. The tags are displayed, but the categories are also working behind the scenes. If you wanted to use categories or if you've been using categories, that's totally fine. They're still being used, such as this archive page here for the uncategorized category will list whatever. So if you've got categories that are working, your category archive pages are still working, and you still have similar archive pages for your tags. So anytime you click on one of them, this connects to the archive list of all of those blog posts. So that's what they do in the back end. And you can also include a widget possibly in the sidebar where you list your categories or where you list your tags. This is something you could do by going through your widgets in the back end, appearance widgets, tag cloud, you may want to do that. That would create a cloud in your sidebar. It's a matter of just doing this, adding to widget. There's also one for categories, so you can add that as well. I'm just giving it a title. If you wanted to, you could do this. You could also use the tag cloud for categories. Up to you what you want to do with this. I'm also doing this here up to you once again how you organize that but this is how you could create that navigation if you feel that it's lacking and you want your user to have this so for me this is not very useful cuz i this is just a demo site there's not much content but this would create the links that are similar to what you see here they do the exact same thing and if you ask me while i set up your site i can help you style those widgets and i could also place them in the footer for you and make sure that they look good based on the type of content you have and the length of your blog title and such.
because blogging is a WordPress feature and nothing specific to my theme, you can control your tags and categories by navigating here. At any time, you can see how many of each count you have. You can create new ones here. You can also create them while editing your posts. And similarly, you can view all of the ones that are listed by clicking on those links here. So if you've decided to blog, I hope you found this useful. I highly recommend you use a horizontal featured image